I, I think one of the biggest issues I have, Howard, with besides the errors that are being made, is the on-field authority. The referee's courage of the convictions to be able to deal with issues, whether it's players behaving in a certain way, whether it's dissent, whether it's simulation, whether it's fourth officials having to be subjected to uh, managers, uh, whether it's referees being pushed by Bruno Fernandes or players coming up behind uh, the linesmen in the game at Anfield the other day. So I, I feel that your referees lack substance at times, lack the ability to lead and lack the authority. And part of commanding the respect and demanding the respect and being able to get the outcomes that both the public and the players want is a certain level of authority on the pitch. And I think they lack substance. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that's a, that's a fair point. I think uh, we've seen over time levels of behaviour deteriorate and an acceptance almost of some behaviour. Which, which part is a fair point? The players' behaviour or your guys not having the authority they should I think, have? I think, I think both parts. I think play behaviour, technical area behaviour has, de has declined over time. I think that's the reason why we've got some uh, people, a group, a working group, a participant behaviour working group, looking at the moment at how we can take some, some real steps to change the trend in terms of the behaviour. But we're going to be right at, the, right at the front line of that. Our officials are going to be at the front line, mm -hmm. dealing with players who are surrounding them, ensuring that, that coaches in the technical area that that behave in an unacceptable way that sets a really bad example are dealt with strongly. At the moment, we're in a world where quite often our officials, and I did this myself when I was on the field, will will take a conciliatory approach. We'll try to play things down. We, we'll not. We'll, we'll we'll try to not overreact. We don't want to to ruin the game in that moment by taking strong action that might send a team down to 10 men that then changes the balance of a game because of some reaction from a player. If it's a bad tackle, two-footed lunge, fine, no problem. But if it's something that is you know, more related to behaviour, officials for some time have taken quite a conciliatory approach and we need to change. We need to, we need to take stronger action consistently and I think we're going to see that coming into to next year because I sense, I don't know if you guys get the same feeling, that there's a, a feeling within the game that it's time for change in that respect, that we need to focus on this great product that's on the field, yeah. the game, and not some of the, the circus that happens elsewhere I think around some on of the behaviours. I mean, we're going to be in, involved in that, of course. A lot of top coaches, I'm sure you'd agree with me, hide behind this, oh, it's all in the emotion of the game, the moment of the game, we're caught up in the emotion of the game. They've got to behave themselves, and they've got to help you guys. Yeah, and it, it has to be this whole game approach. We hear those sort of terms quite often, don't we? But it needs to be um, our guys feeling supported to take strong action on the field. I mean, they're not helping themselves at the moment by taking a, a more conciliatory mm. approach. You You're going to change I, that, I yeah. think to change the, 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 the sense of authority on the field, mm -hmm. we need consistently throughout the season, and not just through the first weeks of the season, yeah. but consistently through the entire thing and beyond into every season, take this, this firm, robust approach in terms of behaviours that fall below acceptable levels, supported by the authorities beyond the actual game itself. And the FA have been good this year in terms of, you know, in terms of the action that they've taken where they can against teams who surround officials who, you know, when the behaviours in the technical area have not been right and proper. Is that why some good, strong action taken. Is that why you came out so robustly behind Paul Tierney? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's still a case ongoing at the moment there, but, you know, but, but based on what I witnessed, Paul Tierney behaved in an appropriate way and needed our support. You know, th these, these, these officials are, you know, performing well most of the time. I've acknowledged when they've made errors. I'm here to support them and defend them, of course. Yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, and you're true to your word, Howard. You said you'd take a call, we're going to take a call. I don't know Danny the Villa fan, but Danny the Villa fan is through to us. Good morning to you, Danny. Morning. Okay. Yep. Yeah. good, good, good. Howard, if you pop these headphones on, we'll hear Danny. Danny, good morning to you. Howard is with us live. So lucky boy, you're through to us. What do you want to say? Um, I just wanted to discuss the possibility of a challenge system and why there hasn't been enough talk, in my opinion, as to why that could be introduced. Uh, I think there's some really interesting points and I think it would be a net positive uh, if, if we were to have the ability to challenge some of the decisions. Maybe if it was the captain having one per game or, you know, one per half. And, you know, if you, if you get it right, you keep your challenge. If you lose it, um, you lose it. Uh, so I've got a couple of points here that I just wanted to touch on, and uh, if you will, um, as to why it would be a positive. Go on then, Howard. What do you think? I mean, similar situation in tennis, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Danny. Great to speak to you. Um, yeah, when VAR was first being thought about, and and it was sort of like it was it was in the works for a long, long time. I mean, you know, 
over five, six, seven years, they were talking about the way they could do it. They tried it out in different places and different sort of protocols were drawn up in different parts of the world. Um, they did look at a possibility of this challenge by a coach or by a captain, but they they decided, the International FA Board and FIFA, who worked together on the creation of the VAR protocol, decided that there wasn't a need for a challenge because every key situation in the game gets checked. So every time there's a goal scored, every time a penalty is awarded or a penalty maybe could have been awarded, red card given or maybe should have been given, yeah. every situation is looked at by the, by the VAR. And then the VAR asks themselves the question, was the on-field decision clearly wrong? Is it one that I need to get involved in and send the referee to the screen to have a look at again? Mm. Obviously, some of the debate sits around you know, <laughs> whether or not that threshold of clearly wrong has been met. That takes a judgment by the human being sitting in the VAR booth who then recommends a review. Yeah. We believe that's the best place to be because we think if we just say to the VAR, oh, you know, just send them to the screen just for a second look. You know, some would, some wouldn't. What's the trigger point for that second look? At the minute, sure. it's clearly wrong. So, we, you know, we, we, we understand why it works that way. Um, if you had a challenge system, maybe it could work. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, the referee would still need to take a look at it themselves. For sure. In the fullness of time, you might look at it. Howard, this is from Danny. Thanks for that. This is someone who works in the game. I know this chat. I won't name him. One thing I'm interested in the law, incidentally, this is fascinating with Howard this morning, but the law is so complicated now. Does Howard believe there's enough understanding of the laws of the game amongst players and amongst the public? I think there's probably a basic understanding. Um, I hope what we did last night might have given some more insight into some of the specific processes around uh, around the use of VAR, for, for example. But I think a lot of it just comes down to the subjectivity. I, we, we think, look at handball. Handball creates so much talk. Doesn't yes. It? You know, I, I know UEFA recently put together a panel of ex-top coaches and players who came together in Switzerland and they said, look, we know we need clarity on the, on the handball situation. What is and what isn't handball? Because we're asking officials to make a judgment as to whether the position of an arm is making the player unnaturally bigger in an unjustifiable way. So what you and I think are unjustifiable positions, what's unnatural to you, Jim, unnatural to me, might be slightly different. My job is to get the officials thinking as consistently as possible, in line with what the game expects through consultation with the players and the, yeah. and the coaches, LMA, PFA, all of these bodies yeah. to try to credibly apply the laws of the game but don't expect it to be perfect every time because we're making judgments in the moment on the field or in the VAR yes, in yeah. terms of whether that threshold of unnatural has been met sure we'll finish with this and I want you to have the final say and you've, you've got an extra 15 minutes with us and I hope people out there realise this is liver than live this is live at the moment Howard has come on and we are trying to push the points that you want to hear Howard answer to all the VAR sceptics out there Howard to all the sceptics of our referees, what would you like to say? I'd like to say that everything we do is with the intention of making the game better. This year alone, we've seen 97 clear errors rectified by VAR. We're working hard to be as efficient as we can be and reduce errors. We think there's a net positive to the game. We think that the times that we have to slow the game down to do the diligence of a check is a price worth paying to ensure that we don't make clear errors that can impact the outcome of a game that impacts the outcome of a relegation battle or battle to get into Europe. So overall, we're working hard to be a positive influence. We think we're moving in the right direction and we'll continue working hard to do so. Excellent. You enjoying the job, Mr Webb? Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.